So this is what we're going to be using today in these sunsets in the West. We have a Amontillado Sherry. We have the Luxardo Maraschino liqueur. And we have some Pacheron, which is a rare Basque liqueur. Uh, it's a anise-based liqueur that's got some slow berries in it. And then they throw some coffee beans um, and wood age it. It's a, it's a really cool product, not very easy to find. Uh, you can, might have to special order this one to make, to make the drink, but it's just good stuff. It's got good history. It wasn't really available anywhere until the Basque fought in the Spanish Civil War, and then it just got popular. Western Europe liked it, and then it sort of found its way over here, and uh, I love it. So finally, we're gonna finish with the Yamazaki 12-year-old um, Japanese single malt whiskey, which is made very much in the Scotch style. They can't call it a Scotch, obviously, but it is definitely intended to be that. Japan latitudinally falls where sort of Scotland falls on the globe and the Japanese liking all fine things and trying to make them better than the people that make them very finely started making scotch and they do a really really excellent job with this product it's all the same basic raw materials um, it's just a really nice delicate rich dense mouthful of flavor and it, so it really caps the drink off well the other interesting thing about this cocktail the sunsets in the west is the Yamazaki is what we're using now but you can use an aged tequila, rum, like an aged rum, rye whiskey, bourbon, any of the dark, full stuff, all works. Um, cognac, the menu we have, it. we have a list of five or six different things you can choose from. The most popular being the Yamazaki and the Añejo tequila. So, uh, this is a stirred cocktail, and we're gonna start with our least and smallest ingredient, which is not the least in flavor. It's a house-made cacao tincture. Very easy to do. Get like a 100 proof rye, something big, something with a lot of, lot of power to it to extract the cacao out, put it in a mason jar, cover it up, cover up the cacao, cap it, leave it for a month, shake it every day. And you have what is like just the essence of coffee. It's fantastic. So the proportions in this drink are pretty much equal parts on the minor ingredients. It is half ounce of the sherry. Montiato dry oloroso. Nothing clear, nothing fino, nothing sweet. So you want to keep the, some of the nuttiness, but keep it dry like sherry's can be. Next ingredient, half ounce Luxardo Maraschino. There we go. And then finally, the Pacharan. So we're gonna go half ounce of this as well. And our spirit, of choice, the Yamazaki is a one ounce pour. Remember, anything else you want to use. Something dark, something rich, something full flavored. Um, experiment. I find other brands that I like. One ounce of that. So, I'm just going to add ice, stir. I don't know if this is time for a tutorial, but stirring is a gentle art. Treat that ice delicately and the drink will be treated like, like you want it to be treated. You want to keep things tight and the cohesion in the alcohol. You don't want to beat it up like you were shaking it. I know we've all seen people stirring where they start jacking that straw up and down in a glass. You don't want to do that. You want to keep the back of the, the, back of the spoon working against the inside of the glass the whole time so that the ice is just allowed to sort of flow together and not crash together. You know, you can take temperature off the outside of the glass depending on your ice and how hard it is and how, how cold your freezer was and how wet the ice is. It's about a 20 to 30 second stir. I think most home freezers, if they're putting out big square cubes of ice, that's gonna come up to like 45 seconds to get this right. Okay. There's always the handy straw to taste, check. Make sure you feel good about it. I do. All right, so we're going to strain this. And then we're going to finish with an orange twist. We're going to burn the oils, which it kind of provides like a nice caramelized burnt orange quality as opposed to just the fresh, bright zestiness of an orange. The best way to do it is to kind of cut off a little disc here, leaving some of the white on the back. That gives it a good snap for when you want to hit it. You soften the oil up, just get the, get the orange a little bit warmed up and give it a pop. And then you, you want to shoot that oil across the side of the glass like that. If it goes right onto it, it's going to leave kind of a burny dark residue. And it's just not very pretty. And you take that orange, take it on the edge of the glass, drop it in, orange side up. 
there we have it. The sun sets in the west. Cheers.